the Sunday on the church calendar is known as the Good Shepherd Sunday. The text that we're going to read comes from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. The entire chapter deals with imagery of sheep and shepherds and sheep pens, and we're going to have some selected verses from that chapter. Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We do thank you, dear God, for your love for us, the care that you provide, the shepherding that you offer. Now, Lord, open our hearts to hear your word, to reflect upon your teaching for us. Guide us in our meditation, and through the imperfect human word, may your divine word be heard. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever seen a flock of sheep in a field? Probably. If so, let me ask, were you able to tell them apart? Or do they pretty much all look alike to you? Some may have stood out because they were especially large or maybe heavier or, or maybe they were very small or woolier, but chances are good that they pretty much looked alike. In our lesson, Jesus makes the observation that while sheep may look alike to us, the true shepherd can identify each and every sheep in his or her care. This was important. Why? Because it was common for villages to build a large sheep pen right outside of town. And then at night, all of the shepherds could bring their sheep into the security of that pen, and it could be guarded by a single gatekeeper. This meant that all of the shepherds did not have to build a fence. All of the shepherds did not have to arrange for 24-hour care. They could have them in the security of that one pen and get their own rest. Of course, in the morning, the flocks had to be segregated out again. There was no branding, no numbering system, no hat or coat check, if you will. So how did the shepherds get back their own sheep? It was simple. They each knew their sheep by appearance and by name. They would call their sheep and the sheep would come out and follow them. It was a good system. Except, of course, when someone tried to steal some sheep. Apparently, every now and then, someone would try to climb over the back of the fence or maybe cut a hole in the fence or sneak in in some way. They were not there, of course, to lead the sheep to pasture. They were there to provide themselves with a mutton dinner. Look, Jesus said, the shepherd will come to the gate and call you out. Anyone who comes in from the back way is a thief. 
Okay, but this seems rather obvious. So why was Jesus talking about it? He was trying to help us to understand that not everyone who comes to a sheep pen is a shepherd. That not everyone who comes to a sheep pen has the sheep's best interest in mind. In this sense, it was a warning to beware of those who would try to harm us or lead us astray. Now we might think that as he's giving this lesson, the ones he had in mind were actual thieves or maybe scam or con artist, or anyone who sets out to in some way harm us or to trick us out of our possessions or our money. But that's not what Jesus was thinking at all. He actually was talking about trusted, respected members of the community. He was talking about the religious leaders and the economic leaders and the political leaders of the community. These are the ones he insinuated were thieves. Not stealing people's money, but rather their souls. Let's put this teaching in context. Jesus was out and about every day, all day, usually into the evening, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, giving hope to the hopeless, assuring people of God's love. You might say that he was making them to lie down in green pastures, leading them beside still waters, restoring their souls. Through teaching and miracle and invitation, he was leading people to God. He was leading people to God's pastures, which are the greenest of all the green pastures. So how did the community leaders, the priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the religious and economic and political leaders of the community, how did they respond to this? They told people to pay no mind to Jesus. They said that he was an unrighteous fraud leading people astray. They actually commanded people to have nothing to do with him, but rather to follow them instead. <laughs> follow them? They imposed inflexible laws that really had no relevance to faith. They imposed customs which, not surprisingly, kept them in positions of honor and power. They denied miracle. They taught judgment without grace. How green were those pastures? These community leaders, these trusted, respected leaders, were not leading people to God. They were leading them to an old-fashioned shearing. Jesus warned about this. His teaching was actually too directional. He was talking to the leaders, making it clear that the people were following him because they recognized the voice of the shepherd. And he was simultaneously talking to the people, saying, beware of those who would enter into the back of the gate not there for your benefit. A warning. Now, there are a couple ways to read this lesson. One is simply to, to step back from it a bit and to view it as a private feud between Jesus and his adversaries. He was putting his agenda up against their agenda. They were going in divergent ways, and they each wanted the people to follow them. In that respect, it really is no different than Democrats and Republicans, conservatives and liberals, or Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Protestants, Catholics, Pentecostals, Unitarians, 
all claiming truth and vying for followers. From this perspective, we are innocents caught in the middle of a tug of war as people tug for our loyalty and for our very souls. It's one way to read the lesson, and, and it's a good way because we can understand that, can't we? We know how that feels. I mean, every day, every single day, we are bombarded by talk radio, by network and cable news, by newspapers, magazines, podcasts, YouTube videos, internet posts, office chatter, all, all espousing every conceivable opinion about every conceivable topic. Lose weight this way. Worship this way. Get rich in this particular way. Pay attention to this philosophy. Listen to this expert. Pay no attention to that person. Take this one with a grain of salt. It just swirls around us day in and day out. All of these voices, all of this cacophony of sound, and it, it, it becomes overwhelming. We, we don't know what to believe. We don't know what is right and wrong. We don't know where we might even begin to find green pastures and still waters. There is a tug of war going on. We are caught in that tug as people vie for our souls. That's one way to read the passage. My problem with reading it in this way, or only this way, is that it frees us from responsibility. Sheep may be cute, but honestly, they're not known for their intelligence. It's really rather easy to direct sheep to go this way or to go this way. We are not a bunch of sheep that are compelled to go with whomever gets to us first. In this in this lesson, Jesus actually changes the metaphor. For a while, he talks about the shepherd, but then he switches the metaphor to the gate. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. He will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. And he says then, when the shepherd comes to the gate, the shepherd goes out and the sheep follow because they know his voice. Because they know his voice. This is the point of our responsibility, to know the voice of the shepherd, to know the one we are to follow, to know the one who's leading us to green pastures and still waters. We cannot silence all of the voices that are around us. We, we cannot quiet those who are leading us astray, who are teaching us falsely. We cannot silence those who don't have our best interest in heart. We can't get all of the noise to stop. We can't get silence to surround us. But we can, we can learn the voice of the shepherd. And it's imperative that we do so. Otherwise, we put ourselves in jeopardy. And it happens. It happens all of the time. 
we, we get distracted by all of the noise. And then sometimes imperceptibly, sometimes unknowingly, we end up following the wrong leader. We, we hear all of the noise and, and we get all caught up in the lies that are being spoken by those who don't have the best interest at heart. Look, God has made it clear, just abundantly clear, that God is willing to lead us to good places. But folks, God is not the only one speaking. We have to listen carefully. We have to listen selectively. We have to develop that skill to recognize the voice of the true shepherd. And that skill is developed by regular worship and prayer, by studying scripture, by sharing the faith. That skill is developed by listening with others. This is why Christian community is so important. You know, we all, we all like to have at least one other person listen with us when we're hearing important news, and maybe test results coming from the doctor or, or tax or financial news or, or reports or, or maybe information from our children's schools. We like to have at least one other person listen so that we can compare notes and see if we're hearing the same thing. Well, in the same way, we want to listen together as believers so that we can compare notes and see if we're hearing the same thing. Getting through life requires listening carefully, listening selectively. It means learning the voice of the one who comes to the gate and calls us out by name one who leads us to green pastures and still waters, the one who brings us life, abundant life. I know, I, I get it. It's hard. It, it, it's confusing. It can be overwhelming. All I can say is, listen up. Listen carefully. And then follow the leader, the true leader, Christ Jesus our Lord. May God bless us to that end. Amen.